In Zimbabwe, we actually have 526 different species of butterflies, so most people are blown away when you say that figure, and within that there's a number of different subspecies and lots of different forms. So there's incredible diversity of um, butterflies in Zimbabwe, but obviously that's, um, that diversity is a threat. Um, but yeah, there's a huge number of different species. Not as much as further north in Africa. Um, in the tropics you'll get a couple of thousand species in each country, but we have a good, a good selection here. Yeah. Major threat is basically habitat destruction. You see, the, what you need to understand is, we said we have 526 species of butterfly. Each species of butterfly, the adults can feed on different plants and nectar and stuff, but the caterpillars, they eat leaves of plants, and each species of caterpillar, which turns into a butterfly, needs a specific plant, tree, indigenous tree, or it might feed on a small range of trees. So um, if the, we call it the larval host plant, if that tree, disappears, there's basically no food for those um, for that species of butterfly. They can't go and, a butterfly that its caterpillars feed on mosasas can't go and feed on uh, another tree. They need the mosasas. If over a very long period of time the climate changed, the temperatures would increase and butterflies would have a specific habitat on one mountain and need that altitude, which corresponds to the temperature. If the climate, um, if the climate changed so much that that place had a different temperature and they went further up the mountain until there's no more mountain to get to a colder region, they could be affected in theory. In practice on the ground, there's far bigger threats. Um, the deforestation, as I said earlier, the habitat destruction, that you can wipe out a butterfly species in um, a matter of months if you chopped out all this food plant. Climate change is, would be a much longer term thing which in our lifetime we're not, um, we're not seeing. Although the, the, the removal of the forest is also mm -hmm. going to contribute exactly. towards the climate change. So you've got... You so know, it, it might affect the butterflies and the climate, but yeah. that's the primary issue is the deforestation and the habitat destruction, I would say. Everything is interconnected. And if we start losing certain species, whether they're butterflies or trees or, or anything, we, we are actually damaging our, own, our future and our grandchildren's future. I'd say overall there's very much a lack, of, um, a lack of appreciation for butterflies. Most people know of sort of one or two species of butterflies. They'll know a white butterfly, a yellow butterfly. People don't appreciate the diversity we talked of earlier, how many different species there are. They have no idea that each species of butterfly needs a different tree. People think, oh, all butterflies are like silkworms, they feed on mulberry leaves. It's, there's a huge lack of knowledge about the basics of butterflies and how they depend on the environment, that relationship. And so people might say, oh, we, we like the butterflies, but they the ones chopping down the trees, they're the ones destroying the habitat, which they don't know that they're killing the butterflies. So as um, we said, there's a need for education and people to understand the interconnectedness of the, um, of the natural environment. And, and, and butterfly species are one of the best indicators of environmental um, you know, whether it's, it's being degraded or whether it's actually, you know, doing very well. As soon as you start getting drop-off in species, you know that your environment has got issues. You know, you, the more butterflies you've got, the better your environment. So those, we see the butterflies, but those butterflies that rely on the plant, the um, flora, diversity and flora, there's a whole lot of other species that rely on that same flora, which we might not notice so easily. So if we see butterflies declining, it's alerting us that everything else is declining as well, because they rely on that same habitat. So that's what we're saying, it's a very useful indicator. Each species of butterfly has a different niche, a different habitat. There are some species of butterfly which, like their common names, are even like the marsh acrea or the marsh, um, the, the marsh ringlet. They're, they live in wetlands. So wetlands are essential for butterflies as well and I think everyone focuses on wetlands because of um, the importance for um, water purification and um, providing groundwater. But the areas bordering on wetlands, naturally, naturally around this area you'll have Miombo woodland and intermittent wetlands between. That whole system I think is connected, the wetlands and the Miombo woodland next to it. And that's what's essential, there's a number of species which are um, from just this Miombo woodland area. And if you drive out of Harare, you'll see, yeah, sure, the wetlands are being, um, the wetlands are being destroyed and um, built up, but also the trees next to the wetlands 
are being chopped, you go on the um, Bulawayo Road, for example, you'll see some old trees where they've been protected on the size of massive masasas, and the next place, every, the biggest trees sort of two meters tall. Everything's just been cleared. So I think it's an overall um, environmental just utter destruction, which includes wetlands, which is what is so alarming. The population might be on one hectare, 100 meters by 100 meters. That's the one population, that's where the altitude's right, the right food plant, the right hand that they have a symbiotic relationship with. Zimbabwe is losing 10 million trees every year. If we carry on at this rate, there will hardly be trees here, we'll be a desert. We won't be able to talk of big game, let alone butterflies. Um, so at this rate, deforestation in Zimbabwe, yes, we'll definitely lose butterflies. Um, and especially things with such a small area, you go and plow up that sort of one hectare and plant your potatoes, that butterfly's gone. So they are very vulnerable, especially those specific species. It isn't an export from Zimbabwe at present. Um, the, I think the main exports, there's some sort of export of from other countries. There's export of some sort of set specimens for overseas collectors, but the main export is of pupae, live pupae for butterfly flight houses, in um, sort of the developed world, people go into um, what they call like butterfly houses and they can see these butterflies. And a butterfly only lives for three weeks, so you need a constant flow of pupae and they can't breed them in their cold country, so they breed in places like um, Indonesia and Malaysia and sort of uh, some from Central, Central Africa. So I think there's a possibility that could happen in Zimbabwe. You'd need lots of um, obviously permits for exports and stuff. I looked into, I've done lots of breeding of butterflies and a while ago I looked into um, exporting some pupae of the citrus swallowtail, um, but I wasn't getting anywhere near the right, the enough quantities of pupae to export. You need several hundred every week um, sort of thing. So you'd have to have a whole scheme of breeding butterflies. But that's one possible way that you can give butterflies a value and give the forests, give their habitats a value is say, if this tree feeds that butterfly, and it has been done saying, okay, get the local people to breed butterflies there and then they, it gives a value to those trees because now they can export butterflies which need that tree. Um, so there's a possibility, but it's not being done in Zimbabwe currently. Mm -hmm.